morning and welcome to St. Mary Parish on this Monday of the fifth week of Lent. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, by whose wondrous grace we are enriched with every blessing, grant us so to pass from former ways to newness of life, that we may be made ready for the glory of the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. In Babylon there lived a man named Joachim, who married a very beautiful and God-fearing woman, Susanna, the daughter of Hilkiah. Her pious parents had trained their daughter according to the law of Moses. Joachim was very rich. He had a garden near his house, and the Jews had recourse to him often because he was the most respected of them all. That year, two elders of the people were appointed judges, of whom the Lord said, Wickedness has come out of Babylon, from the elders who were to govern the people as judges. These men, to whom all brought their cases, frequented the house of Joachim. When the people left at noon, Susanna used to enter her husband's garden for a walk. When the old men saw her enter every day for her walk, they began to lust for her. They suppressed their consciences. They would not allow their eyes to look to heaven and did not keep in mind just judgments. One day, while they were waiting for the right moment, she entered the garden as usual with two maids only. She decided to bathe, for the weather was warm. Nobody else was there except the two elders, who had hidden themselves and were watching her. Bring me oil and soap, she said to the maids, and shut the garden doors while I bathe. As soon as the maid had left, the two old men got up and hurried to her. Look, they said, the garden doors are shut, and no one can see us. Give in to our desire and lie with us. If you refuse, we will testify against you, that you dismissed your maids because of a young man was here with you. I am completely trapped, Susanna groaned. If I yield, it will be my death. If I refuse, I cannot escape your power. Yet it is better for me to fall into your power without guilt than to sin before the Lord. Then Susanna shrieked, and the old men also shouted at her, as one of them ran to open the garden doors. When the people in the house heard the cries from the garden, they rushed in by the side gate to see what had happened to her. At the accusations by the old men, the servants felt very much ashamed, for never had any such thing been said about Susanna. When the people came to her husband Joachim the next day, the two wicked elders also came, fully determined to put Susanna to death. Before all the people they ordered, send for Susanna, the daughter of Hilkiah, the wife of Joachim. When she was sent for, she came with her parents, children, and all her relatives. All her relatives and the onlookers were weeping. 
In the midst of the people, the two elders rose up and laid their hands on her head. Through tears, she looked up to heaven, for she trusted in the Lord wholeheartedly. The elders made this accusation. As we were walking in the garden alone, this woman entered with two girls and shut the doors of the garden, dismissing the girls. A young man who was hidden there came and lay with her. When we in a corner of the garden saw this crime, we ran towards them. We saw them lying together, but the man we could not hold because he was stronger than we. He opened the doors and ran off. Then we seized her and asked her who the young man was, but she refused to tell us. We testify to this. The assembly believed them, since they were elders and judges of the people, and they condemned her to death. But Susanna cried aloud, O eternal God, you know what is hidden and are aware of all things before they come to be. You know that they have testified falsely against me. Here I am about to die, though I have done none of the things with which these wicked men have charged me. The Lord heard her prayer. As she was being led to execution, God stirred up the Holy Spirit of a young boy named Daniel, and he cried aloud, I will have no part in the death of this woman. All the people turned and asked him, What is this you are saying? He stood in their midst and continued, Are you such fools, O children of Israel, to condemn a woman of Israel without examination? and without clear evidence, return to the court, for they have testified falsely against her. Then all the people returned in haste. To Daniel the elders said, Come, set with us and inform us, since God has given you the prestige of old age. But he replied, Separate these two far from each other, that I may examine them. After they were separated, one from the other, he called one of them and said, How you have grown evil with age. Now have your past sins come to term, passing unjust sentences, condemning the innocent, and freeing the guilty, although the Lord says, The innocent and the just you shall not put to death. Now then, if you are a witness, tell me under what tree you saw them together. Under a mastic tree, he answered. Daniel replied, Your fine lie has cost you your head, for the angel of God shall receive the sentence from him and split you in two. Putting him to one side, he ordered the other one to be brought. Daniel said to him, Offspring of Canaan, not of Judah, beauty has seduced you, lust has subverted your conscience. This is how you acted with the daughters of Israel, and in their fear they yielded to you. But a daughter of Judah did not tolerate your wickedness. Now then, tell me, under what tree you surprised them together? Under an oak, he said. Daniel replied, Your fine lie has cost you also your head, for the angel of God waits for the sword to cut you in two, so as to make an end of you both. The whole assembly cried out al aloud, blessing God who saves those who hope in him. They rose up against the two elders, for by their own words Daniel had convicted them of perjury. According to the law of Moses, they inflicted on them the penalty they had plotted to impose on their neighbor. 
they put them to death. Thus was innocent blood spared that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. God is my shepherd, so nothing shall I want. I rest in the meadows of faithfulness and love. I walk by the quiet waters of peace. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Gently you raise me and heal my weary soul. You lead me by pathways of righteousness and truth. My spirit shall sing the music of your name. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Though I should wander the valley of death, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Your rod and your staff, my comfort and my hope. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. You have set me a banquet of love in the face of hatred, crowning me with love beyond my power to hold. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Surely your kindness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of my God forevermore. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked man, says the Lord, but rather in his conversion that he may live. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, but early in the morning he arrived again in the temple area, and all the people started coming to him. And he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and made her stand in the middle. They said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. So what do you say? They said this to test him, so that they could have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger. But when they continued asking him, he straightened up and said to them, let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again he bent down and wrote on the ground, and in response they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. 
So he was left alone with the woman before him. Then Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She replied, No one, sir. Then Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, do not sin any more. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please join me in the intentions for this Mass, for Pascalin Kogia. Please keep him and his family in our prayers. And so we hear in these readings, and in the readings we've been having for the last couple of weeks, is about judgment and mercy. And we see two different, uh, two different uh, readings today about the, the great story of Susanna and the elders, a woman, a holy woman, who was accused by the lustful pursuits of men who tried to trap her so they could lie with her. And we see how Daniel was stirred up by the Holy Spirit, that the God of justice did not allow this woman of Judah to be put to death for a crime she did not have committed. And therefore, these evil, wicked men were the ones who received their just punishment. And then we hear about a woman caught in adultery. And it's always interesting that people brought this woman who was committing adultery to be stoned. But where is the man? Where is the man who was in this situation? Why is he not being also being charged with that crime and with that punishment? And so in many ways, we often see that aspect. We see the speck in other people's eyes, but we don't recognize the beam in our own. These wicked men who grew over time, it wasn't their first crime. They had gotten away with this successfully with many women of Israel who were terrified, who were afraid, who relented and gave in to their advances. And then we hear this woman, and Jesus doesn't let her off scot-free. He just reminds everybody who is accusing him of all that they have done, that we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. We have all been that prodigal son, whether it be the one running away with our inheritance and squandering it, or the one who holds grudges against our younger brothers, the ones who have failed us, the one where we have not gotten the tension we think we deserve by being holy. But we thank God for that prodigal father in that story. Prodigal meaning extravagantly wasteful. And so that's what we hear. Jesus is being extravagantly wasteful by telling this woman, go and sin no more. In many ways, he gave her a very strong punishment. He gave her a heavy burden to carry to say, go out and don't do this again. Turn your life around. Pick up your cross and follow me to the cross. And through that you will find eternal life. And so that's what we do on this, this fifth week of Lent. We are being more and more focused as we travel our own journeys to Jerusalem. As we pick up our cross and follow Jesus. He's saying also to us, I do not condemn you, but go and do not sin anymore. So let us look in our lives this week. If we haven't availed ourselves of of reconciliation this Lent. If we haven't gone to any of the group reconciliations that were offered in Evanston, or we haven't gone to confessions on Saturdays from 3.30 to 4.30, let the, this be the week. Let us hear Jesus' voice of forgiveness, of encouragement, of saying, go and sin no more, because I know how good you can be. I know with God's help you can resist all of these different temptations. So let us pray for each other. Let us pray that we may all walk this journey and that we may hear the Lord's voice, that we may too get up from our shame. We too can get up from our vices. We too can get up from our sins and be forgiven through the sacrament of reconciliation and we can go out and with God's help we can sin no more.
we should pour forth prayers at all times, my dear brothers and sisters. But above all, in these days of Lent, we ought to watch more intently with Christ and direct our petitions more fervently to God. For the whole Christian people, that in this sacred time they may be more abundantly nourished by every word that comes from the mouth of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the whole world, that in lasting tranquility and peace our days may be truly become the acceptable time of grace and salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For sinners and the neglectful, that in this time of reconciliation, they may return to Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for ourselves, that God may at last stir up in our hearts aversions for our sins. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those sick among us, that they may be given comfort and healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who have died and for those who will die today. We especially pray for the intentions for our Mass, for Pascaline Kurgia. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that your people may turn to you with all their heart, so that whatever they dare to ask in fitting prayer, they may receive by your mercy through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive this bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and we come for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, and become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that preparing to celebrate the holy mysteries, we may bring before you as the fruit of bodily penance, a joyful purity of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed, and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we do give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that you come for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he is betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and Blaise our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. And we especially remember the intentions for our Mass, for Pascaline Cogia. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may, be, may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait for blessed hope on the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come, at least spiritually, into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Strengthened by the blessing of your sacraments, we pray, O Lord, that through them we may constantly be cleansed of our faults, and by following Christ, hasten our steps upward toward you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We will pray our Renew My Church prayer together. Lord Jesus, you speak to us today as you spoke to holy men and women who have gone before us. In every age and in our own time, you call to us and say, Renew my church, pour out the gift of your Holy Spirit upon us, and so enable us to hear you clearly, to listen to each other attentively, to imagine our future boldly, to discern your direction wisely, to persevere in your holy will courageously, to stay together in charity, to surrender our own plans readily, to embrace the greater good, to hand on your gifts to future generations. May we remain in the holy company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Joseph, the Apostles, and all the saints. May their example and presence inspire us with patient confidence and the work of your grace. We ask this of you who live and reign with the Father and the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. As I mentioned uh, uh, a week or so ago, on March 25th, we celebrated our second anniversary of recording Masses. Uh, from in March of 2020, after the churches had closed, uh, we got the necessary equipment to be able to start recording in the parish uh, center chapel. And so for two years straight, except for one day where, because of schedules, we could not get a recorded mass, we were able to provide for all, all 
now that we have come out of the pandemic in a way where the protocols are no longer in, in force, where people are now coming back to mass, we will be completing this part of the journey of recording masses effective on Wednesday of Holy Week. So that would be the 13th of March. We do that because we love doing this. We provide it well. Uh, we love doing it for the daily masses and also Sunday. But uh, the amount of people watching now has decreased significantly. And so based on it's very time consuming to record and upload, uh, we ask for your indulgence as we ask that you uh, come to Mass whenever possible. Or if you are not still able to, then uh, avail yourself of one of the, the area parishes. As we move towards unifying with St. Nicholas, with some other aspects coming up during Easter, uh, our focus will need to be elsewhere. And so we ask that you continue to keep us in prayer, avail yourself as necessary, but I ask that you consider uh, truly to, to start coming back into Mass. Uh, we have and still provide a safe place for you to worship. We still offer face masks at each of the doors. We offer hand sanitizers, and so you can uh, be assured of remaining safe. Uh, for receiving communion, if you were to come up, I wear a mask also. And so I'll do everything to keep you safe. But at that time, I ask for your understanding. And I say thank you for your participation these last two years of being part of these Masses. It's been a great joy for me to be able to do that, to offer that. And I've heard from many people that it helped them get through some very tough times. And so as we grew in becoming community in a whole different way than we ever had been brought up to be in church, I say thank you for being those great pioneers and for helping us uh, grow in, in these. Uh, we will be looking at going forward with uh, live streaming when we get the capabilities. We're still waiting for parts of uh, both our uh, for audio and for also then uh, for live streaming in the church. Uh, we're upgrading the sound system this spring. Parts have been on order since uh, before December and we're still waiting for some that are expected to come in April and May. So I ask that to be your prayer this week, that, uh, that those parts will come in, if, uh, if not sooner, then at least by the time they're being promised. And so we can start working towards that. And then as we unify with St. Nick's, who has some uh, technology capabilities they're already using, uh, it might be an easy transition where we'll be able to do the live streaming. And, and that will be, make it a little bit less uh, sinuous in some of the, the hard work that we continue to do now. And so trying to work more smartly rather than working hard. And so again, thank you for, for all that you've been. It's been a great joy for me, and I love doing this, and I love knowing that uh, we're together. So please keep each other in prayer, in gentle prayer. And if necessary, if you're not able to come to a Mass, uh, please avail yourself of other parishes in the area uh, in the meantime. Uh, we're still working. Uh, we will be recording the Mass for Easter Sunday morning, and then we will also be looking at uh, Sundays going forward and what is or isn't going to happen. And we will keep you posted uh, in the bulletin and e-blast that, that you will receive weekly. So thank you, and God bless you. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Bow down your head for God's blessing. Set free from their sins, O Lord, we pray the people who call upon you, that living a holy way of life, they may be kept safe from every trial. Through Christ our Lord, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. And before leaving, I just want to say thank you again for to Frank and Carolyn Carlton, who provided so well by doing the Lord's will, for providing this beautiful chapel. When it was dedicated in 2018, who knew that it would be such a, a vital component of our mission of, and going out and reaching people during a time of pandemic, during a time of isolation, during a time of sheltering at home. So I say thank you and, and blessings and prayers to Frank and, and Carolyn for all that they've done for their far-reaching vision of knowing that the word, word, Lord is calling them to 
provide well for his church. And so when, if you see them, please, please give them your thanks that they were able to help and provide for us in so many ways as we grew in some very uncertain times. Wait for 